What tools do you need to build a skill level three rocket? That's what we're gonna cover in this video. Welcome to Advanced Construction Videos, where we show you how to tackle rocketry, building techniques, and more. On our website, we sell kits, motors, building supplies, and electronics. So come and learn, shop, build, and fly when you visit us at ApogeeRockets.com. Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan from Apogee Components. We're in our series on what tools do you need to build the skill level three rockets. Before we covered skill level one and skill level two, and I would recommend that you watch those videos because you're going to use those tools as well. So you're gonna build on what we've done in the past. In skill level three, what we're doing now, we're in the average complexity of, of rocket kits. So these are your everyday rockets. When you're doing skill level three, we're concentrating on improving quality. But there are some tools that you might need that we'll cover now. The first one that I'd like to cover is these Estes tube cutting guides. These are really cool. They only come in some certain sizes, but they are the common sizes for model rockets, particularly the small ones. What they're used for is to cut tubes. So you put them on your tube like that and you crimp them down and it's locked in place. And that gives you a nice straight edge where you can either draw a line around a tube or make a nice straight cut. So that's the first tool that I would recommend. Kind of going with that are these, and these are tube marking guides. So they're very similar. So what you do is you put the tube on there and you'll notice that there's little marks on it where you can mark for fin location. So there's a three fin or a four fin that you can mark. And again, these are the common sizes for small tubes up to a BT-80, which is your 2.6 inch tube. I also recommend in skill level three that you start using epoxy clay. It comes in really handy for things like nose weight and fixing things where regular liquid epoxy might run. This stuff is gonna stay in place. It's like clay, it's very thick and you mix it together, you just knead it together like dough, and then it cures because of a chemical reaction. We have this in two varieties. We have the Fix It brand. This is a long cure, so it'll probably fully cure in six to eight hours. And then we have a, a fast cure called Bond-Aid, which is gonna cure in five minutes. So Bond-Aid we recommend for on the field repairs, but when you're actually building a rocket, the Fix It gives you a longer working time because you need that working time to mix it up. You know, that starts the process right there. Also in skill level three, some of the unique tools that you might use, these are airfoil assistants. They're from North Coast Rocketry. And what you do is you put sandpaper in the little gaps like that, and then you can stick your fins in there and you can round them off and it gives you a nice even surface on both sides. Also in skill level three, you're gonna start making holes in things. And we would recommend that you start investing in some metal tools. This is a set of drill bits. Obviously you don't need this many. They come in smaller sets, you know, more common sizes, particularly in the smaller sizes is what you wanna start with because you're gonna be drilling holes for like vent holes and for rivet holes and things like that in your rockets. So get a good set of drills. And, and they don't have to be expensive. You can always go to a hardware store and they always have like the discount bin and there's always drill bits in there. So start there. Also in skill level three, you're gonna be using super glues a lot more. This is the super thin variety and it's thin like water. You don't thin it out with water but it's very thin like water. And because of that, when you pour it out, it can go into a lot of places. So we recommend this tool, and these are super glue tips, and we sell them here at Apogee. And they're basically little plastic tips that you stick onto the tip of the super glue bottle, and then you get really fine control on where the super glue is gonna go. And this keeps it from going in places where that you don't want it. They come like this, a very long thing. What I always do is I take a knife when I first get them and just trim off the end because you don't need that much. It's going to go on there, but it's going to be loose fitting. And to make it conform better to the tip, I take 
just a heat source. This is just a, a lighter, but you can use a match or whatever, and you just heat it up just slightly, you know, get the plastic warm. You can see it start to move around and then just slam it on there and push it down. Don't heat it up so hot that your fingers are going to get burned. Just enough to, you know, get it on there. And, you know, now it's on there nice and tight. It really conforms really well. So do that, you know, the first thing when you get them and just throw them in a box. And then when you need a glue tip, pull one out. The other problem with super glue is that the nozzle is so fine that they can clog. So another tool that I like to have, and I hope you can see this, this is just a piece of thin music wire, just very stiff wire. And what you do when they clog, you can pull them off the bottle and then take the wire and run it through and push the clog out. And that way they last a long time. I also like to throw them in a bottle of acetone. So I'll just keep like a little baby food jar with acetone with a really tight fitting lid so it doesn't evaporate out. And then you just throw them in there and then the, the acetone will dissolve the super glue. And then I'll pull them out of the bottle and then run the music wire through them to clear them out completely. I also have the pliers in there because that little music wire, it's going to get glue on it. And then you can take this and just slide it along the wire and pull the, all the excess glue off of there. Um, so it's easier to run through the tip on that super glue. Also, at skill level three, you're going to start to clean things. Um, so save your old toothbrushes, throw them in your range box, you throw them in your building supply box. These are really good for cleaning things off. You can see this is very dirty. I would never use it on my teeth again, but uh, it's, you know, for making rockets. Another thing, one of my favorite tools in skill level three is a wood dowel that has sandpaper glued to it. But these are really good for sanding on the inside of tubes. You know, those tubes, they always get a, like a little burr because they, the way they cut them, particularly big, thick centering rings. So this allows you to get in there and, you know, move around and sand things on the inside. And I did a video on how to make these and it's pretty simple. You know, you just need a sandpaper, some glue and a wood dowel. This one has rough grit on one end and finer grit on the other end. So I can, you know, use it in a variety of situations. Also in skill level three, you're gonna to start to weigh things. So having a scale available, I've got two digital scales. This is the fine one that goes down to one hundredth of a gram. This one is down to a tenth of a gram. This one can take up to two kilograms. This one only can take 500 grams. So you can see, you know, the finer measurement, it's gonna be less weight. So you're gonna maybe want one or two different ones. I like this one for mixing epoxies, but then weighing bigger things, I'll use this one. So have a scale and they're cheap. You can buy them on any online, you know, department store. They have them there. And then also in skill level three is you're going to need a way to align fins. And there's several different tools. This is the R box of fin alignment guides. We sell these here at Apogee and I really love these things. And that's why we just save them. We just throw them in a box and then you just pull out and find the size you need. So this is a 24 millimeter tube with three fins and there'd be a 24 with four fins. And so this this is a BT60 with four fins and we make them you know, all the way down from 13 millimeter all the way up to three inch in diameter, you know, either three or four fin variety. These are really nice to have. I like them because you can do all fins at one time on the rocket. You don't have to wait for the glue to dry. So you can put all the fins on and it's a lot quicker. But there are certain times where you have an oddball size tube. So those are for the standard size tubes. When you have an oddball size tube, then this would work. This is called the guillotine. This is an older version. The newer ones are much better. Basically, they operate the same. You take your tube and you slide it through here. It locks it down and then you align these rails and you can drop your fins in, squeeze them tight, and then the fins are nice and straight along the tube. But you can only do one fin at a time. So you do one fin let it dry, then rotate it around, do the next fin. The other advantage is you can do any number of fins. So it doesn't have to be three or four. It could be five or six or eight or 10 because you have an, an infinite variety of ways that you can orient the tube in here. So that is putting fins on your rocket. Um, there's one more tool, but I need to clean off my desk and I'll show you that one in just one second. In skill level three, you're starting to do bigger and better things. You're getting more involved. This is no longer a toy 
for you. This is now a hobby. So now we want to learn more about rocketry as we progress further. So for that, we're going to use software. And I recommend the Roxin software from Apogee Components. One of the first things that you're going to do when you get the software is you want to figure out where the rocket is going to balance. So is it going to be stable when you fly it? And for that, we're going to go into the software and we're going to look at the 2D side view of the rocket, which is this little button way over here. And this is going to tell us the center of gravity location and the center of pressure. The center of pressure has to be further back. That's where all the aerodynamic forces are centered and the center of gravity has to be in front of that. When you do that, always make sure that there's a rocket motor loaded. So right now this rocket doesn't have a motor in it, I can go to prepare for launch, choose an engine, and then from the list, select the rocket motor and select the delay. And then click OK, and you can see that it loads a rocket motor back here. And that's what we want to look for is the center of gravity, where that is when the rocket motor is installed. And this is always a fresh motor. So that's the first thing that you want to do. You want to know where that center of gravity and the center of pressure. Then you want to also know how high the rocket's going to fly. And this will allow you to run simulations to figure that out. So I've already loaded the motor and I can just hit the launch button and it's going to run a simulation and it's going to show me what that flight profile looks like. So this is a screen of the rocket sitting on the pad and we want the rocket to stay inside of this uh, triangle. We call it the weather cocking cone. We want the apogee point, the highest point in the flight, to stay inside of that cone. When you push the launch button here and it's running a simple simulation, you see the smoke coming out when this when it's going upwards, it's coasting now, and it's getting near the top, and then the parachute pops out. So now we've hit apogee, and as long as that apogee is inside of this cone, that's a great flight. So that's the kind of things that you want to look for when you're running the RockSim software. And then we're going to go deeper and we're going to use it to actually pick rocket motors. And Roxim is set up really simple. There's just three clicks of your mouse and you can run hundreds of rocket motors and find the ones that will work for your rockets. It's just three little clicks. So that's what we recommend when you want to pick your own rocket motors. We also have an online version called the Launch Visualizer, which allows you to run those simulations and to see how high the rocket will go. And it's all in three dimensions, so it's like on Google Earth, and you can see the mountains in the background and you know the trees that you have to avoid. And that's online. Um, you don't need to load any software on your computer. You just go to rocksim.com and you can check that out right now after you watch this video. We're going to talk more about the software in the future. Oh, one other thing that you're probably going to do really quick with it is you're going to use it to print out templates. Like this one right here is a template of a centering ring. Rocksim does these really easy. You can do centering rings and fin plan forms. So if you're starting to think about designing your own rockets, you're going to need that kind of thing to create centering rings that are the right size for the tubes that you're putting in your rockets. We're going to talk more about this because there's so much more that you can do with it. There's a lot of tools that are buried inside of RockSim that you're going to find useful when you design and build your rockets. So this was skill level three. Uh, we're going to do another one on skill level four. And so stay tuned for that one. We also have the ones on skill level one and skill level two, what tools you'll need for those simpler rockets. My name is Tim Van Milligan, and may the winds be light, may the skies be blue, and may all your rockets fly straight and true. <laughs>